This is New Cap News with Brian Lentz. Good evening and thank you for joining us. We have new information about reports of shots fired near Lloydminster. On March 4th, Kitscotty RCMP responded to a report that shots were fired from a moving vehicle near Highway 619 and Range Road 20. Police stopped a vehicle in the area and were advised an occupant was suffering from a minor injury caused by a firearm. The injury allegedly occurred when a separate vehicle swerved at the victim's automobile at an intersection. After following and attempting to stop this second vehicle, an occupant shot a firearm hitting the victim's car before fleeing the area. The suspect vehicle was found east of Lloydminster. Police say it was reported stolen the day before after running with the keys inside. Kitscotty RCMP continue to investigate and recommend you do not pursue or attempt to stop suspicious individuals because you never know exactly how they will react. The Saskatchewan Summer Games are two years away, but preparations are already in motion. City Council has approved the Host Society Board of Directors for the Games and who shall serve as Lloydminster's representative. Josh Ryan has more. The Border City has a rich history with hosting large amateur sporting events, and as the 2020 Saskatchewan Summer Games loom on the horizon, the City of Lloydminster is preparing for another opportunity under the gaze of the entire province. Puts a spotlight on the city of Lloydminster for a whole week uh, for people from across Saskatchewan. They may have never been here for people to travel from southeast or northeast Saskatchewan. Councillor Glenn Fagnan is the city's representative on the Games Board of Directors. Also, the full list of names on the Host Society Board of Directors combines many individuals who have volunteered at previous games in 1997 and 2008 while introducing new blood. It's nice to be passing that off uh, and get some new people on if we're going to have games uh, coming down in the you know, later 2020s and the, and the 30s. So it's good to get that experience there. Thousands of volunteers will be required and Lloydminster's many facilities will be on display, perhaps none more than Lakeland College. That's kind of the heart of the whole operation. Uh, they'll be sleeping, they'll be eating there. And uh, of course, there's uh, all kinds of activities that go on uh, day and night. I mean, it's a great facility and a lot of people wouldn't have seen it if they hadn't been to the games. Past experiences that have been supported by the community are a big part of Saskatchewan's entrustment of the games to Lloydminster. Whether it be the accommodations of the athletes, the sporting events, the volunteers, the sponsors, and um, I think we checked off all those boxes. So uh, really now we're ready to start organizing. The Board of Directors will soon start organizing volunteer leaders, communicating with facilities, and working on fundraising initiatives for later this year, hoping to stay ahead of preparations before the Games and thus provide the best experience for the incoming athletes. We want to show them what Lloydminster is all about, but we want to make sure that we're really focused on the athletes and making it a real special time for them. Josh Ryan, New Cap News. The Lloydminster and Distri District Co-op is celebrating the reopening of their agro centre today. The renovated retail space features a remolded sales floor as well as modern offices and a meeting room. This ag facility dates back to the early 90s and, and certainly uh, hadn't undergone uh, a great deal of uh, TLC over the years. And, you know, we underwent a, a rather major renovation in terms of our showroom and our office space. And uh, this is the result you see today. Stevenson says the $1 million upgrades are just one way that they intend to continue to provide for the agriculture sector around Lloydminster. I think this just showcases our commitment to this sector and that, uh, you know, uh, we're in this for the long term. Uh, we continue to invest, not just in the ag sector, but in the community at large, in, in all of our divisions, and that will continue to be a focus of our cooperative moving forward. The Agro Centre will offer products such as sprayer parts, seeds, and other ranching and show supplies. Well, every day, major progress is made in the world of technology, and it's quickly making its way into mainstream learning. As Michaela Henschel reports in this week's Beyond the Classroom, a design studies course is prepping students to become the future of a sector where so much is still unknown. These grade 9 students are getting hands-on with some bots. 
Robotics is a great way that we can take concepts from the class, but we can also, through a problem-solving approach, have them work through something and develop something and have a final task in mind that's still going to you know, relate back to the science course that they're doing. While the course works to enhance what's taught in science, design studies build a deeper understanding of the mechanics behind STEM-related topics, like engineering by incorporating technology. You get more hands-on, more assignments, more projects, and you get to like make things that are bigger and better than just regular science classes. As technology progresses in our everyday lives, schools are taking steps to equip students with the right skills to excel and continue to develop the world of computers and automation. You can basically try something new that you probably wouldn't have done it unless you were in like a higher grade, but this really gives you like a deeper understanding of like science and design studies. I think the philosophy of having this course is knowing that as the job markets are changing that now in the future a lot of the jobs that these children are going to have in five, ten years from now are jobs that aren't even going to exist. So how do we prepare them for those jobs? We can't teach them the skills that they're going to need. We're going to have to teach them the skills that are going to benefit for the unknown in the future and those are going to be more of the problem-based solving skills that we offer in scientific design. Well, another topic that held producers' attention at AgriVisions this year was land values. Our Gerard Lampo had a chance to meet a realty broker who is assessing the marketplace. The changing landscape of agriculture is reflected in the increase of land values over the last 30 years. I would say like the last uh, decade has been very strong for everybody. Saskatchewan has probably performed a little bit better uh, on a percentage basis anyways. Uh, we've had uh, some real gains in cash receipts and in production technology, which is uh, really boded well for us. Tim Hammond is president and owner of Hammond Realty, dealing with farmland in Saskatchewan. He grew up on a farm southwest of Bigger and studied agriculture economics at the U of S. He compares Saskatchewan and Alberta land values over the last decade. Saskatchewan has probably uh, increased anywhere from 150 to 170 percent, uh, whereas Alberta has increased 100 to 120 percent. So Saskatchewan has increased a little bit more, but Alberta started from a higher point. Typically, Alberta land values are 2.2 times as high as Saskatchewan. So, uh, so the actual dollar per acre increase was very similar, but the percentages were, uh, were not. Hammond says Saskatchewan's range per cultivated acre is about $1,000 to $3,800, averaging about $1,600. Comparing this to Alberta, the range is about $3,500 to $4,000. Given the changing nature of agriculture, he thinks land values will remain solid. I think our gross cash receipts are going to be similar, if not a little bit stronger, on a national basis going forward, and that's going to bode well for farmland values. Hammond balances the robust fundamentals in agriculture with the realities of the marketplace. I think the bulk of our increase is, is over, though, so if land values do increase, it's going to be more modest, kind of in the 2 to 4% range, but still very solid fundamentals underneath it. Gerard Lampau, Newcap News. This is New Cap Sports. Well, it's been another solid year for Holy Rosary Senior Boys Basketball. The team may be one of the best in years at Lloydminster's West Side High School, and another trip to Provincials would certainly give them a chance to prove it. But the Raiders must first get through zones, a challenge that many fans and team members believe shouldn't pose much of a threat. Lance Phillips with the details. Third. The ranking for Holy Rosary's boys team entering ASAA Northeastern Zone Finals. It's a ranking that isn't sitting well with Raiders coaching staff or players given the team's recent success. But it's not about to slow the winning attitude this team has. We're good. We uh, won two Edmonton tournaments before Christmas. We just won the last two we went into in February. We're feeling pretty good about ourselves. And what gives the team that confidence doesn't come from individual efforts. It's a team for a reason, and in basketball, depth is king. Everything, uh, everyone in our team is pretty talented. We're pretty balanced, and uh, yeah, hardworking team. Just our, our numbers. We've got uh, six guards we can rotate. We've got four posts we can rotate. Previously this season, the Raiders have had close contests with other teams in their zone. But for some, the idea of confidence is an understatement, while for others, it's cautious optimism. 
we're obviously feeling confident, but every team is a good team. And uh, as you can watch with uh, whether it's ACAC or NCAA March Madness, any team can upset another team. I'm pretty confident uh, we're, uh, we're going to win zones because uh, the way we've been playing defense and uh, we're running uh, all our offensive plays, uh, yeah, everything comes with defense. And uh, we played uh, the top five team in province last week, so I'm pretty sure uh, our defense is pretty good and that's what's going to make us win. Lance Phillips, New Cap Sports.